Hey there, fellow poners. Welcome to Master of Ponages, Art of Total War. Today, we're going to be talking about Arminus, the commander. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different than the other commander videos, and that's just because he's the only commander for the barbarians, and because there's only really two kinds of units for the barbarians. So we're going to start off by going over the detailed abilities of Arminus, and then we're going to talk about um, the units that are best to use with him, what units to avoid, and my recommended unit configurations. So let's get started with the abilities. So as far as abilities go for Arminus, they're all pretty straightforward and obvious what they do. Momentum helps you get around really, really quickly. There's no, there's no duration to it. It'll last infinitely until you stop. So typically what I do is I will stand still with my units if I'm trying to move with another group of people and I'll wait for them to get a little bit ahead and then I'll start moving trigger momentum because you also get a charge bonus so you don't ever want to stop so in other words you don't want to get too far ahead of your teammates so make sure you kind of meander around or when you get to where you want to be the position you're going to hold move your guys around keep them moving so move them to the left move them to the right move them back a little bit move them back forward keep them moving to hold that momentum going until your cooldown respawns or you're really close to it, then you can stop and stand still to wait for the enemy to show up or do whatever you're going to do. Frenzy. So this one gives you a minus to your defense, but a very small plus to your damage and a huge addition to your melee attack. So knowing when to use this is very, very important. If you're, if you are, so to clarify for anybody that doesn't know, melee attack basically means how how easy is it for your unit to hit the enemy unit and it's a counter to defense so if you're already striking the opponent with ease you're not getting a lot of misses if you see a lot of misses popping up over the enemy then that's when you want to trigger frenzy if you don't see a lot of misses and you're already getting up you're, you're already getting majority of hits doing damage with most of your swings your your, your friendly attacks then you don't want to trigger Frenzy because all you're doing essentially is giving yourself a lower defense because having an, a higher attack doesn't help because you're only doing an additional 10% of damage. And that's still debatable. So it, you have to know when to use it. And it's one of those things you'll learn as time goes on. If you've overwhelmed them, the enemy that is, then you want to trigger Frenzy because it drops their morale very, very quickly if you just start to decimate them at a very quick rate. Scout. So Scout's a very useful ability when you're playing as a team. Remember, this is a team-based game, guys. So even though you you don't have archers with your barbarians, Scout gives you a larger visibility range and a lower defense. So if you spread out your team just a little bit, your team being your three guys, and you turn on Scout on all three of them, you're going to see a huge area that you wouldn't see otherwise. And that gives your team better visibility of what's going on. Make sure you turn it off before you get into combat, though. Infiltration. Infiltration is a really fun ability. Um, it does much, much less for you in higher tier battles because most players are situationally aware enough to know that you're not a real friendly um, but in lower tier battles or when you're playing against newer players, it's useful. It's also useful because even if your enemy is vigilant and knows that you're an enemy, you still have that split second advantage. So you come out of the fog of war and you're blue. Because you're blue, the enemy will hesitate. So maybe you're attacking archers. You trigger to infiltrate before you came out of the fog of war. You start charging towards them. Maybe you get an additional one or two seconds closer before they actually attack you because they have to process what's happening instead of the instantaneous, he's red, shoot him. All right, so this is where it's going to get a little different, guys. We're going to talk about what units are good or bad, um, like in the other videos. I will update this video as more units get released and as more commanders get released for the Barbarians because things will change. Um... There's really only two types of units for the Barbarians, guys, and that's Swordsmen and your Cavalry, all of which are melee. 
So use them all. Uh, they're all good. Um, obviously, your horses are going to move faster, but they're a little bit weaker in defense. And your swordsmen are much stronger in defense, but they're not as fast. So it's a trade-off. Choose whichever way you want to go. And we're going to end it off with my recommended unit configurations. So when I'm playing with Arminus, I will typically not mix my units. I will use all three infantry or all three cavalry. And that's because your infantry with Arminus are all light except for your warband, which is an exception because he's medium. But for the most part, you only have light infantry. Now, light infantry thrive in the woods. That's where they are good at fighting. Cavalry, as you know, are not good in the woods. So mixing these guys up, you don't want a single cavalry running around out there. He's just going to get decimated. And you don't want a single swordsman running through the woods because he's going to get decimated by whatever he encounters. So I, I tend not to mix three swordsmen, three cavalry, preferably all the same type because it'll change your tier and you don't want a lower tier unit. And that's pretty much it. This guy's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. A lot of fun, guys. If you're using swords, stick to the woods. If you're using cavalry, use that infiltrate ability. It's really fun to hit their artillery and their archers because they have no idea that you're the enemy. It's a lot of fun, guys. Now, the nice thing about infiltrate is that it lasts a very long time. It lasts a little over two minutes at level one, and it just goes up from there as you level it up. So if you're using that cavalry, guys, make sure you use an infiltrate because you'll be able to just decimate their archers and their artillery behind enemy lines. Hope you guys learned something and enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe above. All my vapors out there, please stop by vapejerk.com. Use the code MASTER20 at checkout for 20% off. Till next time, guys, hone on.